So the value equation, okay, and how people perceive value has three factors. Service, quality, and price. Okay? Pretty simple. And it's service and quality over price. That's key. Because at the end of the day, is what you're paying, really are you getting in return in service and quality that you're finding value in that price? You'll find a bunch of businesses and you'll find a bunch of service leaders focus on price and price all day long. And this world is changing. It's important, but people are more empowered than ever. So I hear a lot of people talking about how the older generation has screwed it up for the younger generation. I'm kind of in the middle, so I don't take any blame either way. But I'll tell you who screwed up this world. Everybody in this room. <laughs> now there's a good way to start. And I'll tell you why, it's actually a positive thing. This generation doesn't settle for anything less. This generation has expectations, this generation responds quicker than ever, and this generation has technology to multiply that message faster, larger than anything in the history of modern technology. I'll give you an example. When I was in retail, and by the way, my career started shaking fries at McDonald's. Anybody work at McDonald's? The Habs fan worked at McDonald's. Awesome. You're off. You're off to a good start. But I learned service at McDonald's. That organization gave you training documents from day one. How to hold the spatula at 45 degrees. As silly as it sounds, it inspired you working there. It made the tight pants and the striped shirt worth it in my time. Service was driven into me at a very, very early stage, and that's carried through. But here's what's happened. When I was working at McDonald's and the customer wasn't happy, who did they tell? Remember, I'm 43. Who do you think they told when they went home? One person? Mom, dad, brother? Service was crappy at the St. Louis McDonald's today. What do you do today when you're not happy? You go to Twitter. You go to Facebook. When you get into your professional careers, you'll go to LinkedIn. When you're not looking for a job, you'll go to LinkedIn for something else. And you'll share your concerns. And you have a community of people who trust everything you say more than any ad can ever buy. That word is key, and it's usually based 99% on how you felt and what you experienced and not price. When's the last time you saw somebody put out a tweet that said, here, Jordan's wearing Foot Locker for $219, and I went to Sport Check and got him for $218.99. Foot Locker sucks. No, what you will see is I went out to a restaurant, the waiter pretended I wasn't there, my food was cold, and then they were insulted when I didn't give them a tip. Don't eat at the cave. That you'll see. And two, three other people will read it. So service has never been more critical in that value chain. So when you talk about service and quality over price, if you're in a price war, you've got to out-deliver on service. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And I'm going to take you through key, three key elements today that I'm going to share with you how you can differentiate yourself in your careers, how you can get that first job you want, how you can get that first promotion you want, or at the end of the day, just be happy and proud of what you do. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But service is the difference in today's industry. It's winning and losing. No doubt about it, and it's only going to get worse. And you guys are causing that. God bless you. Because you're more empowered than anyone else before. Think about the people you work with. You got a bad boss? There's a thing called Glassdoor. And rate my boss where you can go online after you leave a company and say to everybody how bad it is there, and people won't apply. That didn't happen. Not when I started. You don't like your job? Go find another one. And I need the money. Shut up and do your job. So, the difference between winning and losing is close. Who here has watched the Winter Olympics? Raise your hand. Okay, let me demonstrate the difference between winning and losing and how it all looks the same. You're going to guess what sport I'm doing, okay? You ready? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, bobsled, football, close. Second sport, a little more difficult. It's a pretty big 
bad imitation if it took that long. In both instances, they're doing the exact same thing. They look almost identical. Can you tell me what the difference in one bobsled to the other for a driver is? Is there any bobsledders in the crowd that I just insulted? No, good. Technique, training, now I'm out of breath. Winning by one one thousandth of a second is all the things you see going on behind the scenes. Winning on a judge's mark by 0 0.05 is all the stuff you see going on behind the scenes. I don't smoke and I work out. I don't know why I'm this far out of breath right now. <laughs> so, let's talk a little bit deeper on those three things. Before we start, I'd like to show you this video on value. Catch my breath. Oops. Yes. Um, you see, yeah, we, we didn't budget for this. That's okay, Mark, it's big enough. Good. Yeah. This, uh, this was marked 1999. Yeah. Well, I've only got $7 set aside for this. So what are we going to do today? Well, I'd like the highlights, mm -hmm. but for now, I can only pay for a trim. Okay, so today we're only going to do the trim? No, the highlights, but I can only pay for the trim. I mean, how much of the taco stand? Was, was one of the... About $12. Yeah, right, right, right. About $12. Sir, we're not the taco stand. You know what, it, it was either beef, the same thing as I had. <laughs> you had the filet. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay, let me make a phone call, see what I can do. Maybe I can get you 850. Can you do 850? I'll pay for the highlights next time, but for now, I need you to just go ahead and throw them in. So basically, you want me to work for free? No, I don't want you to, I don't want you to work for free. It's just a test, so that way I can see if my husband likes it, and then... You can roll the cost over until the next time. I, I need color if he likes it. I went through and line items. Some of the stuff that we could wouldn't just remove. I'm not making any money on this either. You gotta help me out. We got a discount bin. I know. I checked the discount bin, but I want this one. We can do this. This this is not a challenge. This is an opportunity. We tried what three entrees. Three, okay. yes. You ordered three entrees. <laughs> 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 well, we ordered, but it's ordered me to eat. Yeah. We, we, well, what's your name? Uh, you gotta work with me. That one's 19.99. Mike, come on, let's do this. Let's do this. Well, I can cover your hard costs, but that's really as far as I'm willing to go. I'll give you 8.50 today. I'll come back next Tuesday. We're gonna make it up on the next one. What do you say? What? Ah, excellent. Um, we'll go ahead. We'll pay this this time. But what we're gonna need you to do is uh, show us how you made it. So we can do it on our own in house from now on. Dude, it's great dinner. Okay, so theme being, you know, people are looking for more and more value for what they pay for, and then the market's becoming congested, and you have to stand out with service. Okay, and we're going to talk about that today. You also have to do that for retention and engagement of employees. You got to do it with your products, so your product stands out. And then on the marketing side. How do you tell a story that people want to hear and it resonates at the right time versus the old world of advertising that whoever had the biggest checkbook for their ad campaigns, won market share, it's all changed. Have I told you that's your fault, Dick? <laughs> I have told you it's a good thing, though. Hi. Sorry. To Is there a problem, sir? sir? Oh, I guess. Um, uh, oh, I got it. Sorry. It's, right. it's just me. Okay, so we're going to focus on three key things. We're going to focus on the internal, what you do within your organization to lead a team, to set them up for success. And if you want to hashtag duh at the end of this, go ahead. But it's not happening in most organizations today. Okay, so we're going to go through this. It's going to set you up, if you're going to lead in the future, it's going to set you up to pick the right organization to work for. It's going to set you up to demand things you need to be successful in the future. So the internal. We're also going to talk about operational. We're going to talk about the external. So internal. So I'll share with you in three stories each of these slides. So Chris was referring to our days at MLSE together. Um, I was working at a company called Telus Mobility. I was a regional manager, sorry, area manager overseeing their stores. 
in southwest Ontario, Manitoba, and I get a call. And it's a recruiter. The recruiter says, hello, Mr. Pedipa, we've heard a lot about you. I said, that's great. They said, uh, there's an organization that wants to talk to you. I said, I work for the best company in Canada. He said, they do all these things. I love them. I'm not going anywhere. But it's a pro sports team. OK, tell me more. So first question, what do you think it was? Is it the Montreal Canadiens? It wasn't. I still listen. It's the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Toronto Raptors. Wow, OK, cool. This was before the Marlies were in Toronto and TFC was here. And they want you to come in and manage the consumer products division. So all of their merchandise, whether that's in arena, whether that's online, whether it's their catalog program, they want you to manage that entire program. So I took the opportunity. Well, silly me, taking a director level job is my first step up to marry a manager of this big, big company that's well, well known. I inherit my first unionized workforce, or about to be unionized workforce. So the entire building at this stage was part of the Teamsters, okay? And we're not gonna have a union debate here, because it's good in some instances, not in others. That's for another day. Um, but I was inheriting a team that had resisted that union for a pretty long time, didn't make the demand, and they were as I was coming in. So you can imagine my challenge. Where's employee morality? Why do they feel they need someone else to protect them? Are these people being listened to? What are the expectations? How are they recognized? Why do they wanna come to work? Why do they need a union when they've never needed before? And it was in a little bit of dis disarray. So I took what I learned from TELUS, and that's the beauty of the business world, right? Plagiarism bad? Well, they don't call it plagiarism in the corporate world. They call it best practicing. And it's encourage. It's encourage. Go out and see who does it well and do it a little bit better. Don't photocopy their documents and splash your logo on it. That's kind of plagiarism. But take that piece and make it somewhere else and make it better. And I learned a ton of TELUS, and this is what I brought into MLSE, and I'll share the end of the story when we're done with this slide. But the first thing I saw was there was no connection meeting between the management and the staff. Ah, they're just a bunch of part-timers. They come in, they sell some t-shirts, they go home. What do we care? We're doing million dollar deals with Reebok, we're selling Ford ads, we're doing $40 per head on food and beverage on 20,000 people. It's t-shirts, they're kids. Whoa. First thing we did was I connected with all the management team, had connection meetings, found out what they were about, connected with each and every part-time employee because it needed my involvement at that level. And I brought in a new management team when the, the existing management team wouldn't adapt to this leadership status. And we had connection meetings. A connection meeting is very simply, why are you here? What do you do? Tell me about your life. Is this just paying the bills? That's cool, we need great people who need to pay the bills, or do you want to go get a career? Connection meetings. And I've taken that in each and every organization where I've taken a new stop. Okay? Then observational analysis was next. When you get into the service industry, have a look around you of what's going on. Before you do anything, see where the opportunities are and where the gaps are. And this is when you start at an entry level or you're working your way up to president. 